Today, we're talking about the third major feature of our identity statement. That is that we are a spirit-gifted church. We are scripture-guided, sacrament-grounded, spirit-gifted. These are all things that are important to us in understanding who we are and who we want to be as a church, clarifying our values so that we can further live into them. A well-known Bible scholar named Scott McKnight said that when he was growing up in his particular denomination, they believed in the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Scriptures. Some of you can probably relate to that. Unfortunately, at times, in especially Bible-centered movements, sometimes there's a neglect of the Holy Spirit. And we say we want to be centered on the Bible, but apart from the Spirit, that can mean that we are centered on ourselves. Instead of being Bible-centered, we can be human-centered. And what we need is to understand the Spirit of God so that we are always moving with God's movement, always moving with His grace by the Spirit. So let me just tell you, three important ways that the Spirit gifts the church, because we are a Spirit-gifted church. First of all, and perhaps central to everything else, the Spirit gifts us with the presence of God. The Spirit is the presence of God in and among us. That's the beautiful idea in the Old Testament you get where, where God says, I want to dwell with my people. I want to walk among my people. And, and the understanding is that his presence is especially located at first in the tabernacle where they worship and then in the temple. It's the most holy place on earth to the Jewish people because God's presence is especially there. Of course, it overflows from there. And in one sense, he's, he's present in the whole earth, but he's there in a special sense, in a manifest sense with his people. But then you get to the New Testament, and you get this crazy idea that God is not just located in the Jerusalem temple. But God is now located in his people. And the people of God collectively and individually are a temple for the Lord himself. Uh, Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2 that we're being built together as a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. That's amazing. We being built together are a dwelling place for God. That's the Holy Spirit dwelling in us as the presence of God. In 1 Corinthians 3, you have the idea that we collectively are the temple of God. And then a few chapters later in chapter 6, you get the idea that we individually, our bodies, are the temple of the Holy Spirit. This is a mind-blowing idea if we actually understand what a temple is. God in us. That's what the Spirit is doing, making us little temples and making us collectively when we come together a, a, a temple that is built together for God's presence. Because the Spirit gifts us with His presence, with the presence of God, new realities become possible. And this leads us to our second point. Because we have the presence of God with us, we have new life. The Apostle Paul said in Galatians 2 that if the law could have given life, then righteousness would have been by the law. But it couldn't be. The old law couldn't give life. A new law can't give life. No law can give life. What we need is help from above. We need help from heaven. We need the Spirit to give life. And that's exactly what the Spirit does for us. That's why we talk about the fruit of the Spirit, not the works of the Spirit. We talk about works of the flesh in that same context, Galatians 5. But we talk about fruit of the Spirit. How does fruit grow? We don't really understand. We just put a seed in the ground and, and a tree comes up and, and, and fruit comes out. And this is what happens in Christ by the Spirit. Of course, we act, and there are things that we do, but, but we don't understand what blossoms. And because we know that the Spirit gives life, we can joyfully hope for the future for ourselves and for others. We know that, that healing for our deep wounds is possible. We know that victory over sin is possible. We are no longer slaves to sin. And that is because of the Spirit. We know that new communities are possible. The church can be a different kind of entity because the Spirit gives life. And thirdly, finally, because the Spirit is present in giving life, everyone in the church is a minister. There's a new reality of ministry among God's people. Every single person is a minister. We don't just pay ministers. People are ministers if they understand themselves correctly in Christ. And that is because of the central theological truth that the Spirit is poured out on all the people. Not just some, not just people in charge, not just people who've been trained. The Spirit is poured out on every believer. 
And that gives us hope and excitement for every person becoming a minister. When the Apostle Paul is talking about spiritual gifts in 1 Corinthians 12, he uses this imagery of the body. And he points out that every single part of the body matters. And you don't say to one part of your body, well, I don't need you. You're not important. Even if you're doing something different, something that's not as obviously important, something that people don't pay as much attention to, it still matters. It's a part of the body. And we want a church where everybody understands that they matter, not just in word, not just as a kind of slogan or, or a, a superficial statement we make to make people feel better, but because people really are gifted by the Spirit. This is not ultimately about you or about me. This is about God and what God wants to do with his people. And he has chosen to pour his Spirit out on the church. And so we are a people who expect ministry to be happening in and among us. In, in various settings, when we come together as a church to sing, to pray, to preach, to observe the Lord's Supper together, we expect the Spirit to move among us. When we pray, we expect people to be healed. When we have people to our homes, when we show hospitality, we expect God to do things in those settings because we are a people who are inhabited by God himself. And that reality changes everything. We're being built into a dwelling place of God by the Spirit. And I just want to invite you to join with us in living into this great and beautiful reality. God bless you.